this is going to be an odd review. Repost is kind of odd. I love it sometimes. I hate it other times. And with all reviews, I want to show you the capabilities of it, what it can do to bring out the best in you. And with what I found, it is good enough to have great games with, but not great enough to be consistent with. And I'm going to go through that. There's some things that it has that you need to conquer or just deal with. It's got an awesome PVE role that is worth chasing. And for the Crucible, the stat package makes some cool things possible. But again, there's a couple things that need your attention. For the most part, I don't really see these. It gets a ton of praise, but I don't see anybody using them. And sure, it's a comp reward. There's that kind of lock behind it. You just play three games, no matter your skill level on each character, and you get rolls. At first it was bugged, now it's fixed, and the bug version has a perk that isn't even on the weapon. More on that later. Base stat-wise, really good. And legendary-wise, I put it up against Rufus, Failed Threat, the old Chroma Rush. I mean, all the stats are great. And to add on to the stat package, it has stocks as a third source of stat points for recoil and stability being added. And at the core, it has two things that are terrible. There's no debate. Terrible. That really work against it. Number one is the muzzle flash. What this is is a reskin of Arc Logic, and Arc Logic was a 600, and when Arc Logic came out, it had horrible muzzle flash. They later fixed it, and I guess whatever Arc Logic originally had with this aesthetic, this has. They didn't fix it, it's here on this one, and I assume they're going to fix it later, but at 720 RPM, it's a lot worse. It happens a lot more. It's a terrible shooting experience, and once you get used to it, it's slightly more tolerable, but it's horrible. And the second thing is its deterministic recoil. And once we know what it does, we can work with that. Kinda. It has multiple recoil patterns. I'm not gonna go through them all because it has stocks. Some stocks add in plus 20 recoil. But I took the most likely end recoil directions that you're gonna see because the base is 66. You're gonna notice after the sixth bullet, it starts to hook. Crazy recoil. It moves off the center line, kind of crosses it, comes back, and then it levels out. It's so like the first 12 to 15 are kind of finding its way to mid, and then it levels out straight, kind of like Summoner. At 81, a counterbalance mod added, it's the same deal, but that hook just feels more prominent. Then at 86, that's with a recoil stock, it's the same thing. Less of that hook, less of that wind. And then we have 96, a little bit less than that, then 100, a little bit less than that. When you put them side by side, they all have that trait and it's terrible. You feel it in gunfights, like even with M and K, it moves so much. And on top of that, you have the muzzle flash. In the end, this sequence, shots 1 through 6, then 6 through 12, I hate it, and they all do it. The closer you are to your enemy, it's not as bad, but that 26 to 31 meter, 26 to 35 sometimes, it moves so much. And even when you do compensate, it's still unsteady. And again, as much praise as this thing gets, this is bad. The muzzle flash with the recoil is terrible, and it really severely affects the consistency you can have with it. But the perks that it has can help counter that, and that's what I recommend that you do. Multiple perks can. And the third, Repulsor Brace. We have Tap the Trigger, Enlightened Action, Zen Moment, Killing Wind to the Pain. And the fourth, Destabilizing Rounds, Target Lock, Dynamic Sway, Desperate Measures, Encore, Kill Clip. All these can be enhanced. And 720s, they're kind of hybrid SMGs, really, somewhat. You get the Mobility Bump. This has pretty high inherent handling. They feel pretty good to run around with. And their starting range is near the drop-off of SMGs, like that 24 meter range. That's where they start. They're designed for just outside of SMG, but just inside Hand Cannon and Pulse, like a sweet spot. Most end at 32, 33 meters of range, but some can get up to the max, to the cap, 35, 36, 37, which is really wild for this class, and this one can. They have a 0.83 TTK, that's competitive, 9 crit 2 body on tier 10, and they shoot fast so they flinch a little bit better. It's a 0.75 TTK, resilience tier 5 to 9, that's 10 straight crits. Hitting crits is very important with any weapon, especially these. So in the third, we have two perks that stand out. For this particular auto rifle, and it's rare to see it in the third, it just might be the best perk for the third. It's tap the trigger. It lasts for 0.6 seconds, and enhanced importantly lasts for 0.76 seconds. So that's basically the entire TTK. It takes the base stability to 96, and you're going to find stability somewhere when it drops. So it's going to be at 100 stability. And what that high stability does, especially 100, I'm going to show you in a second, that bad recoil, that deterministic recoil, it clamps it. So something like tap the trigger is almost necessary in my opinion, because it tries to negate it. I don't have tap the trigger, unfortunately, or else I would show you, but I have something similar. Also, it's giving accuracy. Also getting it to 100 recoil, which we saw, I mean, it all does the same thing, but it's juicing it for that 0.76 seconds, and that's good. And then after that, we have Zen Moment. I have a role that is Zen Moment Kill Clip. And we have the Flint's Resist, but what it's doing with that deterministic recoil, the 50% less weapon shake and reticle bounce negates that recoil pattern. It keeps it steady as long as you're landing shots. So one way is front loaded. It's just there getting to 100 stability. The other way, as you're in duels, 
it's really lessening what that recoil is doing. And then the fourth, we have some consistency perks. We have some kill perks. As I talked about Zen Moment Kill Clip, one of my favorite roles on it because you can get to a 0.67 TTK on tier 10, most are going to be tier 3 to 9, and that's a 0.58 TTK for 8 crits. So tap the trigger kill clip, Zen Moment Kill Clip. Tap the trigger kill clip, the 0.58, it's up the entire time, even the base version of tap the trigger. There's a lot of lethality there. Something like Desperate Measures gets it to a 0.67, tier 8 to 2. So with most weapons, and I've done a, actually a poor job of this, and I'm going to do better going forward when I review stuff, weapons like this are really, really good with kill chaining perks. Like I said, kill clips the 0.58, but I know this and through reading comments, some are concerned with that. More so, they just wanna win gunfights. They kind of struggle getting to kill clip chaining. So with that said, still in the third, we have tap the trigger and Zen. Those are gonna help win gunfights right then and there, but also do wanna bring up to the pain. I was actually impressed with to the pain on this thing. And the role is to the pain encore. As you take shots, it's stacked at times 10. At that max stack, you get plus 20 aim assist and you get a lot of handling. So what this perk is, is a reimagining of tunnel vision. Tunnel vision, after you get a kill, you reload, you get plus 20 aim assist and you get a handling bonus. This is the same thing, but you don't need a kill. This has a 76 aim assist stat. So if you have on targeting and get into duels, it's gonna have 100 aim assist. So the deterministic recoil that it has, it's kind of winding and whipping around. It's helping those bullets find the head. And like I said, this is the best weapon I've ever used to the pain with. And the role that you're seeing is to the pain encore. It's small bore high cal to the pain encore. So it gets to 100 stability with encore four, and you've seen some gameplay with it. As I talked about with tap the trigger, that's negating that horrible recoil pattern. It's keeping the shot straight and then to the pain's aim assist. So it's essentially 100 stability, 100 aim assist. And what I found with it, again, some way, somehow, you're going to have to deal with its deterministic recoil. Tap the trigger does that. Zen moment does that. In an odd way, to the pain does that because it gives it 100 aim assist. It's helping land more crits. It's helping be more sticky. It's creating a little black hole of headshots. Then a small moment for the perk that's not supposed to be there, Golden Tricorn. Golden Tricorn is actually so good on this thing, and I wish it was an actual perk. That's the Hammer Forged High Cal Killing Wind Golden Tricorn roll with fitted stock. So 49 range, 72 stability. Goes to 69 range with Killing Wind. It also adds plus 50 mobility. The lightweight frame gives a couple. Killing Wind's also giving the 40 handling. Golden Tricorn, tier 8 to 10 is a 0.67 TTK with 9 crits. Tier 1 to 7 is the 0.67 with 8 crit, 1 body. You get that first kill. It's got the high stability, getting better range. It's one of my favorite roles with it. So if you have it, it is worth using. Not only because it's got a perk that the weapon doesn't even have, but it's actually good on it. Kind of honing in on just the fourth column, we talked about kill clip. Desperate measures is okay. There might be a case for enhanced target lock, but I would still stay away. Then we have Encore, destabilizing rounds and dynamic sway. So the front loaded, just winning duels roll, I say goes to tap the trigger, dynamic sway. It's actually a really cool roll because it lasts for 0.76 seconds, that enhanced tap the trigger, so that's gonna get to 100 stability. And dynamic sway ramps up with each shot. This is a 720 RPM. So by the ninth, 10th shot, if you don't have the down, dynamic sway is gonna keep the stability up. But the even bigger part is they're both double accuracy. Enhanced dynamic sway, the max is eight shots. If not, it's 10 shots with regular dynamic sway, but it's giving around 50% accuracy cone size 100% accuracy cone growth. Tap the trigger is 10% accuracy cone size. So a ton of accuracy with max stability. I think that just might be one of the best rules for it. Regardless, if you're looking for a non-kill chaining dueling perk just to win duels or not. Encore gives accuracy cone size as well. Each stack is five range, eight stability. So after one headshot, it's 10 range, 16 stability, max stack. 20 range, 32 stability. There's a world where you can go killing when encore. Tap the trigger encore. Like none of those are gonna be bad. Then we have kill chaining with tap the trigger kill clip, Zen moment kill clip, killing wind kill clip. None of those are gonna be bad, but it all comes to the very first thing that we talked about. It's muzzle flash and recoil direction. Once you conquer that, a combination of these roles, it's gonna do well. But I found even when you're doing well, like it's just still not really consistent enough to be a great weapon. And then I do have this role destabilizing rounds, repulsor brace. Now in the Crucible, it's nice on a 720. I was having some pretty fun games with it with your Falcon. Final blows cause nearby targets to become volatile. Defeating a void debuff target gives you an overshield. I had some fun games with that one, but really that's kind of for PVE. And yes, it's a comp reward, but man, this is a good addition to a PVE loadout for a 720 auto rifle. Built in, if you're able to tag a barrier with volatile, gonna help break the shields. And with volatile working a little bit better now, remember they changed it, it's performing better. And in contest mode, I was running this AR for certain encounters. 
That way I can easily get through shields and get myself an overshield, spread volatile, kind of help out. It did fine, it did great. The only other auto rifle is Age Old Bond. Again, this one performs more like an SMG. I actually like it a little bit more. And this perk combination, weapons like this really shine on Void Titan, especially with the controlled demo. Getting that volatile grants you a nearby ally's health. Then you have the overshield. One of my favorite things to do with a weapon like this is the no backup plan Titan, because you constantly have overshield because of repulsor brace, you're spreading volatile, you're getting health. While the overshield's up, you're dealing 35% more damage with shotgun. So good with legend. I think the Saint shotgun's gonna have some great perks for it. So yeah, it's definitely worth using if you do stumble upon the roll. It's just unfortunate that it's a comp reward. You don't really get too many rolls of them, but when you do land it, I suggest that you keep it. But all in all, it's a pretty impressive auto rifle. And what saves it is it has stocks and it can overcome. It has everything that it needs to overcome the bad things about it. Like getting to 100 stability is crazy. Or going the route of getting the range to in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, whether through Killing Wind or Encore. Really impressive, but the bones of it really hurt. And I think hopefully they're gonna fix the muzzle flash, but then there's still the deterministic recoil. And there are a lot of times, especially within the distance, it's like, well, I just much rather use a Charrier's Wrath at 23, 24 meters and use something else like a pulse rifle for further distances or even at a distance like trying to get in duels 33 to 37 meters with this deterministic recoil kind of wanting to be all over the place I'd much rather have like a summoner I'm not going to knock it because it's a good weapon it's just that I think it has a lot of consistency issues but as you get rolls that's going to be something for you to judge try different things what works best for you and there's rolls here that I haven't tried or I can't show such as tap dynamic sway that might be just a different ball game like an entirely different thing which i'm sure that it is but that's what it takes to make this thing i think overcome some of its downsides it's a good weapon though if you're new here remember to hit the subscribe button and if you are subscribed thank you so much for your support let's talk about repost down below what are your thoughts on it is it something you see yourself keeping in your vault and using a lot as i said i don't really see these i see them once in a while though high praise they don't seem very popular let's talk about it what do you think thank you for watching and until the next one i am cool guy